Hello everybody, this is Terry Jeanette with the Tapping Flamingo. Today's video is all about a collaboration challenge hosted by Deb Hauk. So we are in December of 2021. This will be the last collaboration that Deb is hosting for this year. And I do believe she's going to continue to do it next year. If so, I do plan on being a part of it. But this last one of the year, she has challenged us to use either turquoise or metallic. So I have this rock here, and I'm going to educate you a little bit about turquoise. So turquoise can be an expensive stone. This is not a turquoise. It's probably a magnesite or a halite. Uh which a lot of times, probably I would venture to say a very high percentage of the turquoise out there is not real turquoise. You may pay the price for real turquoise, but it's actually imitation. Now that's not to say that halite or magnesite aren't real rocks because they are real rocks, but they're white and they're dyed. This one I think is a magnesite, uh, but I'm not 100% sure. On the most scale, it is a four to five, which that's the hardness. A halite, also sometimes known as white buffalo turquoise, white buffalo, meaning, you know, it's white at first, but the most scale is a three and a half. Turquoise is between a five and a six. And sometimes you can even get a stone called a turconite, but it's still not a real turquoise. So just kind of beware when you're out there shopping for your turquoise jewelry. There are ways to tell if they're real or not, and I just recommend Google searching that. Um, I usually can tell by looking. This one, like I said, I'm thinking is a magnesite. The other challenge, she wants us to make our own claps, clasp, so I'm going to do that, uh, and I'm going to use some silver tone 18-gauge wire for that, but we'll get to that in a little bit. And then the last challenge, she wants us to use leftover beads from a kit. And I'm going to use these leftover beads I had from my uh, October 2021 Jesse James Ambassador Kit. Now, I have a whole bunch of really cool... Uh, pieces of jewelry that I made if you want to go check all those out but these are the ones that I had left over and it's not necessarily because they were my least favorite because actually some of them were some of my favorite like this right here I just was kind of hoarding them and when I saw that Deb wanted us to use some leftover beads from a kit I thought oh this would be perfect and uh, look at that big whole spacer there and then we have this pretty faceted piece of glass, oh, so pretty. And another one. I love the crystals that they have. Then we have these two um, coin beads. And then we have these two copper. Now I am going to mix my metals. Notice I had silver for my clasp. And I'm going to use silver chain also. And then we have these copper little daisy spacers. We have some wood saucer beads. And then we have some agates. So that's what was left over from my, from my Jesse James um, beads that I had in October. I am going to use some coconut beads. Here's our little halite or magnesite. And in my stash, I found these little bumpy copper beads and then these little silver kind of like globe beads. They've got some etching in them. I am going to get two tiny little seed beads. I am going to use silver colored um, little bead in things to secure everything together. I am also going to need flat nose pliers, round nose pliers, and wire cutters. All right, now we're going to first lay out our beads. 
And I had several of these um, Magnesite. This is the one I chose though. And let's see, what do I want to do? I think I want to use the agates on either side of this. And this is going to not be, I mean, they're going to be even in size, but because we don't really have two of every single bead, they're going to be a little eclectic, I guess you could call this piece, which I love eclectic stuff. Now I want a little bit of shine, so let's put these two next. And then let's go or more to the organic side again. So let's use these wooden beads. Whoops. Okay. And then I think I want a little bit more crystal. Now these, these beads are flat on both sides. So I, I want something that's going to help them, I think I'll put this over here, um, be, you know, flat on both ends. So I'm going to put that there and then maybe, uh, let's see, this. That way you don't have a roundness on that and you don't see the flatness as much. And we have our other little crystal we'll put on this side. And then let's see, we'll put that there. The only two we have left are these coin beads, so we'll put that that there. And um, let's see, what do I want to do next? I think I'm going to put the silver. No, let's see. Got these. I'm going to put these there. And then the silver. Do this on this side. And then I think I'm just going to finish it off with the coconut beads. Let's see. I need to make sure they're going to, to be even. One thing with um, the coconut beads, they're not, some are skinnier than others. They're not consistent with their size. Most of them are. But every once in a while, you'll get a really, really thick one, and then you'll get a really, really thin one. I don't know if you can tell the difference there. So when you put them together, you need to make sure they are even. And when I start stringing them up, I will measure and make sure I've done that. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe five over here. And then I want to end with silver. And then that's where we'll put the chain. Let me go ahead and string these up. And then we'll come back and I'll make a clasp. All right, I have it all strung up. And I've got some different choices that I could probably use for the chain. Let's see what I have here. Oh, I think I like this. I think that Rolo chain is going to look good. Let's see if I got anything else. No, I think this is it. All right, so I need to get my ruler out. I want this to be about an 18 inch necklace. First thing I need to do though, before I do all this cutting, I don't have a clasp and I don't know how long it's gonna be. So we need to make ourselves a clasp. I made a very simple hook and eye clasp. And when I started working with that, what I thought was an 18 gauge <laughs> wire, it's actually 16 gauge. It was very difficult to work with. And I was gonna show you how to do it on that. But then I remembered I actually did a video on how to make the shepherd's hook and eye clasps. So I'll leave a link up here to that video so you can go check out how to do it if you are interested in that. So now it's time to do all the measuring. So basically what I did is I just kind of linked things together here so I can get an idea of how much chain I need. I want this to be an 18 inch necklace. 
Well, let's see, get this class to stay. Okay, here we go. So basically we have this. Let's hook this chain up. Here we go. And that's 12. And then six. And I am going to probably cut a link and then I also need a jump ring. The jump ring is going to be bigger than the link. I'm trying to see if I can actually separate this out. I'm just going to cut it. It'll be just easier. So let me go ahead and trim this. And go ahead and put the chain on. There's one side, and then we got to do the other side. By the way, I highly recommend that you go check out all the other people that are doing this collaboration. I've got their links down at the bottom if you want to go check them out. And there we have the necklace, but I've got to put the clasp on, so I'm going to even this up so I can determine the middle of the chain. There's one link down there hanging. And sometimes they're right even, like this one's pretty even, so, but that's okay. Let's get close to the middle as you can, clip that. And then I'm going to Open this, feed that on, close it up. Now I need to get the jump ring for that. Open up the jump ring. Open up a little wider. This is a pretty thick clasp here. I'll go ahead and put the chain first, then the Shepherd's hook, close it up, and we are finished with our necklace. I love this eclectic necklace. Isn't it pretty? See how you can take just a mixture of different beads and put them together, and it works. I love doing that. That's probably one of my most favorite styles uh, to create is something that's earthy yet elegant with the crystals. What's your favorite? Do you have any leftover beads from a kit? Try putting them all together with some other beads from a leftover kit and see what happens. Anyway, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. I am so thankful for all of you that comment and support me. I love reading your comments. There, it's a lot of fun to interact with you. I hope y'all have a fantastically wonderful day. This is Terry Jeanette with the Tapping Flamingo signing out for now. Bye-bye.